it is a beautiful morning out on the water. We just left a couple hours earlier this morning out of Itoman Port in Okinawa, Japan. I know it's really loud, I'm right next to the engine of the boat, but we're out right now, headed our way offshore to go catch some tuna, some dolphin, and really whatever else wants to eat. So right now, we are trolling behind the boat. We got some big old skirts trolling on some really heavy gear in the hopes of maybe hooking a marlin, maybe hooking a large maki maki, a tuna, really whatever's gonna eat it. Now, I've never been that big a fan of trolling offshore. It's like, you know, if I always had it my way, I'd probably have this boat freaking pinned and then just get to the fishing spot because sometimes trolling can just be monotonous. But there is absolutely no denying how effective it really can be. You see some, like, these boats out of Okinawa catch marlin almost year-round, especially in the springtime, and they'll just, you know, a couple hours behind the boat when they're on their way out to the spot, and they will catch some monsters. It's really awesome how consistently they can catch some huge fish that there's really no other way to target other than trolling for them. They're just, there's so much water out here. You can't go to one spot and just fish for marlin in any other really way. Well, at least no one's figured it out yet. Look in the water, you might see a lot of on it. chain to the bottom of the ocean and that chain and just the structure out here in the middle of nowhere in the ocean is really what's going to hold all the fish. So there'll be bait and like little microorganisms hanging out there, bigger fish eating those and then bigger fish eating those fish. So get the whole food chain out here and that's the whole goal of the day. So to start the day, everyone else is doing some different techniques, but I'm going to come up here to the front of the boat, kind of away from everyone else. And I'm gonna throw a big old popper, see if we can raise some stuff. Last time when I was out here, there's a bunch of active stuff on top. There's tuna, mahi, coming up eating. So I'm gonna throw the popper, see if we can get a strike while the light's still semi-low. Catch something. Captain Oshiro whipped up a nasty vat of chum, there and there was a lot of activity coming up in the chum slick. I knew mahi. it wouldn't be long before some oh, mahi. mahi started mahi. to come up inside the chum slick, so I grabbed a dead bait and started waiting. now on the back. <laughs> Putting the meat in the boat there, Mark? I'm ready whenever you are. for the fish, help for us. You can just, we got a nice, probably 12, 15 pound bull dolphin in the boat. Came up, watched them eat it. Such an awesome fish. They lose their color as soon as you kill them. So we kill them right when they get in the boat. Just, it's better for us on the boat. They don't break stuff and it's better for the fish. It's more humane, but yeah, absolutely beautiful fish. Gonna make for good dinner too. Right out there and looking at all the mahi. Okay, we're off. Uh, hey, mahi right here. Captain Oshiro didn't know much English other than the word mahi. However, 
fishing really transcends all languages, and hey, he was as stoked as anyone every single time fish swam right up to the you, boat. Right really there. awesome dude to fish with. Right, you know? right there. Okay. Rainbow runners are absolutely gorgeous. Look at them. Beautiful colors. Fight pretty hard. It tastes good too. It ain't bad at all. Good fight to go down on the troll while we were changing spots. Get a little drag pull there. A drag pull changed spots we went ahead and put all the trollers out and as soon as we came up to this next pie out both those rods went down so pretty sure our shiro song's gonna make us do another pass and see if we can pull another dolphin or two off the uh, pie out before we start drift fishing and then we'll drift it an electric reel is getting after it definitely helps when you're fishing all the way down 180 meters down, not having to hand crank that thing in. Does it slow down automatically? So it like knows exactly where it's at. And then you bring up some nice fresh tuna. And he's gonna be free. Be free, buddy. Is the main target like always that size or like can you catch like a fucking giant one? feel comfortable with anything up to 100 pounds you think? Yeah. I mean I guess you're fishing probably PE like what like 7 on there or something like that? Uh, PE 10? Holy cow. Yeah that's like a, oh, it's over a 100 pound test. And then you got 130 pound leader. It's just you're basically gonna straighten the hook at that point and that hook's a beast. Yeah. Yeah and then it's like it's like a 3 edge strong. They're eating. Are you fishing? Is that a squid and a soft bait? Yeah. Together? Yeah. What kind of freaking Japanese shit is that? So you use a ring swivel? Yeah. Push it off. Do the ring swivel so you get better action down the road. Oh. Because they go in the dark. Got so it. it. And then the circle hook because like you're not setting the hook per se with 180 meters of line out. Correct. It's more like you're coming tight to them. Yeah. Do you change them after every fish? No. No. no like every, uh, like maybe 10. Gotcha. That's pretty sweet. So what Mark's doing is he's doing the jigging, but the reel is actually doing the reeling. So he's getting his bait all the way down to like 180 meters down. And then the reel will reel back up his line and he's actually doing the reel jigging. We're gonna go ahead and reset. Hopefully he catches that bigger tuna that he's lost. He had like a 25, 30 pounder. Sweet banana weight. Bananas are good luck on this boat. Yeah. Once this hooks down like that, you yeah. won't catch anything. Yeah, it has to be high on the hook. Yeah. 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 Now, it wouldn't be like me if I didn't try a little bit harder to catch some fish on a plug. So I tied on one of my favorite swim plugs, a Rapala x rap and started blind casting and throwing at anything that swam by the boat. Oh, right there. Got him on. Woo! <laughs> on the plug. Woohoo! 
Told you they did the plug. Oh. You didn't doubt me, I just had to say it. Oh. Hey, hey, treble hook. Double hook. Treble hook. Okay. Hey. It's an 80 pound liter. Yes. Double the fuel. Hi, 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 hi. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm in free school. Got him with the stool. Nice. I continued to just start catching every single mahi that swam up to the boat, sort of releasing the little ones, keeping the bigger ones. I actually ended up giving a couple of the bigger ones to some seasick marines on the boat with me, but they were absolutely we crushing the right, X-Rap. Yeah. It was such a fun time. And I'm on, gonna have to go apologize go because go this is one of those times you where I put myself as a fisherman first and I was not filming properly. Y'all, obviously these angles are not ideal and I really apologize for it. But you know, sometimes you just get in the zone and I wasn't focusing on the camera angles and came back to bite me when I'm trying to make the video. But we'll get through this and hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. Hi. fish and everything like that it really makes which is an aw awesome fishing opportunity like who knows you could have a giant marlin swim up right next to the boat big tiger sharks you really just never know what you're going to encounter out here in the middle of the ocean like this a nice tuna on the electric that long leader makes it a little more difficult Now this was absolutely absurd. I wish you guys could see how goofy I looked with uh, DSLR, a GoPro strapped to my chest, and trying to hold on to another rod and pitch at this giant mahi while I was also filming. I just looked absolutely ridiculous. Got him on. Oh, he came off. Are you kidding me? He ate it again. Wow, he came home and hooked the first time and ate it a freaking gan. Are you kidding me? Oh, that was awesome. Oh, he's angry. Trying to film tuna over here. Big old mahi comes up. Oh my God. God, I got too many cameras on me. This thing hasn't fought at all. He's gonna lose his mind up in here. Free spool. Meantime, 
sign of Silent Slayers on the tuna again. Hello, tuna. We are back at the dock. We got a solid haul of maki, tuna, yellow, yellow, rainbow runners, yellow tails, the hell, rainbow runners, yeah. Um, the water uh, got a little bit rough out there on the way in. It got a little bit sporty pretty quick, but uh, had a great day overall. We're gonna get these fish clean and get back to the house. What's going on dudes? We are clearly not on the water anymore. We're back at my place. Actually, now we're back at my place in Camp Fuji, Japan. Yes, that's right. I moved from Okinawa to Camp Fuji. I'll be here for the next six months. I hope you all had a happy holiday and an even happier new year. And I want to thank you guys so much for your continued support over the next year. Y'all, it was an awesome 2018. 2019 is going to be even better. I appreciate you all so much for watching, and I'm going to catch you guys in that next video. Later, y'all.